This next scene is the old opening of the film. This was in for a very long time, a number of years. Many screenings, yeah. Before we changed it. And what it is, is it's a, it's a little musical number to introduce you to the world of Coco. We pray and we pay our respects. We let go of regrets. Because when the sun a song once. We used to sing it every night. Uh, I am not a professional singer, no, and, but I like singing. I, I enjoy it a lot. And they were really helpful to, to guide me through, especially uh, Remember Me. It's a very, very, very complicated song. Yeah, that's going to be great. Uh, to get the notes right, to get the feeling, to get the you know, the, the journey where the, where the song takes you. Just in terms of that line, the secret song. And also to not forget about... The secret song is, is this song. Like the magic that you, you can bring into a song because one can sing it perfectly, but then it's like, whatever. It is about the feeling that you put into it. In this scene, we wanted to find a fun way to introduce Hector. And we also want to establish the rules behind the land of the dead. So uh, we ended up having him be a celebrity tour guide. Kind of like a guy who would drive around and show tourists the star's homes. Yeah, and he held the promise of maybe getting Miguel to uh, Ernesto de la Cruz. Y feliz Dia de los Muertos! You seem like a great crowd. Better than my last group. What a bunch of stiffs. A bunch of stiffs. Buenas noches, senor. What's your name? How did you die? Ouch. And you, senora? What's your name? How did you die? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who are you talking to? Please hold on questions. Who's ready to have a good time? I am. I can't hear you. Uh, I, I am. Louder. I am. That's more. Like it. Memory. It's what keeps us all alive. As long as our families back home remember us, we live on in this beautiful city. Ex excuse me? Again, there will be time for questions at the end. Now, where was I? <clears throat> as long as our families back home remember us, we live on in this beautiful city. Dante is based on the national dog of Mexico. He's a type of dog named a Cholo Squinkly that was around since the times of the like Aztecs and Olmecs and Incans. 
since they don't have any hair, they emit a lot of heat that some people in Mexico actually use uh, therapeutically. They just hug the dogs and they're super warm and it like makes them feel good. In ancient Aztec myth, when somebody died, they had to go on a journey towards kind of a land of the dead called Mictlan. And it was impossible for somebody to navigate on their own. They needed to have a Sholo dog with them. Here was this perfectly Mexican dog that was so connected to both sides, the living and the dead. Okay, rolling, rolling. Here we go with the Sholos again. We were so excited by how unique they were. They're so pretty. You know, they have that kind of charcoal gray. They just look like a volcano. In all stories, you're trying to understand what are the rules of the world and how do things tick. The rules of the land of the dead are there are no living things, so there's no trees, no grass. Trees are sort of metal trees with these bulbs on the end. People can't really get injured like they were when they were living. Because of that, things don't have to be built to code. So you get one scene where Hector jumps off the end of the thing and you're kind of like, ah, and he falls apart and it goes back together again just fine. Keep up, Chamaco, come on! But the most important rule is that you have to be remembered. We designed an entire set around that rule. It's at the bottom of the towers, it's rickety, it's where the people who are almost forgotten live. You only get to live in that land of the dead for as long as there are people back in the land of the living who remember you. This scene is a really, really interesting one for a lot of reasons. It's a remnant of when Coco was going to be a full-on breakout into song musical. And a version where Miguel wasn't hiding the fact that he wanted to be a musician, but leaning very much into the idea that the family really wanted Miguel to carry on their traditions. You will do as we have done. That is how you stay connected. You'll choose family over fun. Always do what is expected. Everything you need to know, our dearly mail has shown us. Plus, you also get free footwear, which is a bonus. Rivera! Rivera! We do what we do because it is the glue to the beautiful life that we got. Rivera! Rivera's a tether together forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and whether we like it or not. Thank you, Abuelita. That was very educational. Now can I borrow your workbench? Abuelita, who is Miguel's grandmother, loves him so much, but she's ardently against music of any kind. And she runs the household with a, with a wooden spoon, I guess. <laughs> Early on, we had Abuelita carry a wooden spoon in her apron string everywhere she went. And if you said something out of line or disrespectful, she would take out the spoon and give you a whack. And it was that way for a good long while. And then finally, one day, somebody said, you know, she, it really shouldn't be a spoon. It should be her sandal. It should be a chancla. Is there a, a chancla gig? A what? You know, a chancla gig? Because that would really kill. Like, if mm -hmm. one of the DS came out, and like, you know, it's it's like the belt. Yeah. You know, it's it's oh, worse than the belt. To wax them with the shoe. Yeah. Abuelita, what are you doing here? Um, uh, you leave my grandson alone. You go. I come from a Mexican family myself, and every so often, when I was being a bit of a brat, my mother would come in with a flip flop, and she'd threaten me, saying, uh, "Do you want a spanking?" And then me and my brother, because usually he was the one who put me up to it, would run to our room, and we'd stick like uh, children's books in the back of our pants to <laughs> protect us.
regular living humans dancing are held to certain rules, but skeletons aren't because they don't have any skin or muscle or tissue. Our skeletal structure is only 20% of our body weight. If the movement of the skeleton is light and the cloth is 20 pounds, how's that going to look? We realize that in the dead world, maybe the rules were that the cloth wasn't so heavy. Digital cloth is made of a mesh of triangles and points. We start with panels of cloth and we stitch them together in order to make a costume on the character. Then we simulate the clothing on the animation. So the problem with putting clothing on skeletons is that the skeleton is made up of little tiny bones. And it was very easy for the cloth to get caught in between individual bones. That's the worst case scenario for digital clothing because all of the clothing dives into the crevices of the bones, kind of like a skeleton wedgie. To fix this problem, we implemented a technique known as continuous collision detection, which allows you to robustly detect all of the collisions as a character moves, even if it's moving really fast. No more wedgies. Music is like the only thing worth living for, or being dead for in your case. Hey, Poco Loco! Hey, kid, man, you were on fire tonight! <laughs> Thanks! Uh, hey, musician to musician, I need a favor. Good, awesome, good. But, before you go, we want to give you an early Christmas present. If that's okay. Yeah, yes, it's totally okay. Gosh! Oh, gosh. Are we gonna open it, like, right now? Yeah, you can open it right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay, what is it? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You've done such an awesome job, and everybody Yay. loves you. <laughs>